Um, this is episode 9 of the Dungeon Designs Art Exam Reviews. Uh, today, we are joined by... Me! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Miller. I'm Amanda. And what do I do? I'm an actress and um, soon to be director. I've got a little short coming up that I'm directing and I do a lot of production stuff so I guess I'm a producer too. And I'm also a mom and a gardener. So. Cool. You, like, because you're a professional, you preempted my first question <laughs> by explaining what it is you do. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. You do this more than I do, so you know. I expect no, actually, this is my first like real interview. Like, I'm. Yeah. yeah. I'm really cool what I do in an interview. I mean, it kind of <laughs> that's kind of the general idea, but it just comes up as like an informal sort of chat thing. So it's all good. Um. Okay. So, you are an actress. What's the thing that sort of inspired you originally to go down the acting? <laughs> so, um, the very first movie I ever saw was Star Wars. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I might be dating myself just a little bit that I actually saw it at a drive-in. Okay. When I was a wee little girl <laughs> and it was, it was a twin drive-in and my parents were watching some Jack Nicholson movie. And I had no interest in it because I was really young. And I remember looking out the back, and the first thing that I remember seeing is Princess Leia kneeling down in front of R2-D2, and I was enthralled. So I actually, I saw Star Wars with no sound. <laughs> wow. So, but it, just the visuals were amazing. And I think that was the first time that I actually remember seeing a movie. Maybe I saw one before, but that's the first one that I remember. Yeah. And. That also is kind of what got me hooked on sci-fi. Um, so I just grew up and loved movies and books and stories and always thought, boy, that would be so cool if I could do that. Yeah. And, but I kind of thought, well, I need to be practical and make money. And so, you know, I went to college and did all that and then got married and had kids and <laughs> followed my husband around the country and, um, actually homeschooled my boys for a long time so you know I did very much the domestic mom thing very different from what I thought I was gonna do and then had an opportunity to do it locally here in Ohio and the funny thing is I went to it was a student audition for the local college here and the guy who was starting the auditions asked me if I had an agent <laughs> and I probably looked at him like he had two heads I'm like, <laughs> I'm in Ohio. No. <laughs> and it, well, apparently it turns out there are several agencies here in, in Ohio. And uh, he gave me the name of a local one. And I went and talked to them and started doing commercials and things around here and found that there's a flourishing film community, probably in every state. But yeah. I was really surprised at how many people who are in the film community here. And I just, I, don't know, I love it. Brilliant. So like, you know, when you like that point when you sort of like being a full time mum and stuff and just like going around, was there a point where you thought like maybe there's something else you wanted to do or was it, or was it always focused on movies? Uh, no, actually I was, I had initially intended on going to medical school and being a pediatrician. Um, okay. So yeah, I really like the human body and medicine and uh, although I don't think I would like it today because I would probably want to look at why are you sick? What are you doing? What's your lifestyle like? Why don't you yeah. go exercise? Let's look at what you're eating. And <laughs> we don't really do that here. It's more like, oh, you don't feel good? Here's a bunch of prescriptions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, so instead, I just kind of like doctored my kids growing, mm -hmm. you know, when they were growing up. Because I'm one of those weird people who blood doesn't bother me. Um, as a child, I would get annoyed if I had to get a shot, if I couldn't watch what you were doing. If I could watch you do it, I was okay. But don't, don't do it behind my back. Like, let me see, you know, let me just do it. I can draw my own, <laughs> I'll quit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just, I really thought that that's what I was gonna do and then got married a little sooner than I had anticipated in my life plan. And, you know, kids came a little sooner. I was actually in school when my first son came along. So he went to graduation with me. So I did get my degree in biology. Um, but 
yeah, so I ended up doing this and I actually looked at going back to school. So several years ago, I looked at getting my master's or what it would take to go into uh, like a physician assistant mm -hmm. rather than doing the full on medical school. And because it had been more than nine years since I got my degree, I was going to have to do more than half of it all over again. And yeah, I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, so then I ended up doing, you know, the movies and the artsy thing, which is really interesting because I was so into, you know, the sci-fi mm -hmm. and the science and although my science, I can't think biology is a little more of a soft science. It's not hardcore like physics, mm -hmm. but, um, I didn't really think that I was creative. You know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not one of those creative people. I'm just, I'm nerdy. That's about it. Yeah. And so it's been really really fun and interesting and eye-opening to find out oh i am a little bit creative that's kind of cool yeah i think it kind of comes out of you when you find that job that you love doing definitely yeah you know like with the acting thing did you kind of like sort of because you said you studied biology did you just like um get through work just like kind of learn it on the job sort of thing like as you went yeah yeah. yeah, a lot of it. I mean, I did a little bit of drama stuff in high school, but definitely a lot of on the job. I've done a few workshops. Um, so, you know, I kind of think that growing up, there was a certain amount of learning that you do, you know, especially mm -hmm. moving, you moved around a lot. So you learn how to kind of meet new people and be yeah. a new kid and trying to fit in new places. And, and then having the two boys, you know, because I also love books, love yeah. books. And so I would read to them all the time and I would do the voices and we would goof around and yeah, and I played with them and when they were littler and when they actually still wanted to play with mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know. So I kind of say that a lot of my training is life experience and then definitely a lot of on the job stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's usually the best way to do it yeah yeah i mean sometimes i kind of feel like i'm i don't know a fake i guess you know because you've got all these people that went to school you know, they went to film school went to acting school and i'm like mm, i'm just kind of picking it up <laughs> yeah well a lot of people i know who went to university and stuff haven't done the thing that they studied they've usually branched off in something else so it's like you know. i mean i studied um game art at university but I haven't gone into games specifically I just oh, kind of do illustration based stuff because I didn't, I didn't really enjoy the course at that much so I kind of felt a bit feeling towards that <laughs> but you know right so is game art a lot of computer based stuff too do you know like in um, movies you've got sort of the pre-production side of things I guess more in sort of fiction things where you have to invent the world sort of thing and characters you've got to do the artwork Sort of okay, so a lot of like conceptual stuff. Yeah, um, but also with game art, you've also got to learn like the 3D side of things. So once you, you've obviously know the fundamentals of drawing, but you've also got to know how to build things in 3D and stuff. So it's kind of it works together. Like the in-game sort of assets, like you'd see like a character or a building or something, you'd learn how to model it. 3D okay, things. so you would come up with the ideas and the artwork, and then the programmers would create that but, based off of your art yeah the, the programmers like make it all work basically the artists create the visual side of it so yeah oh so like a game artist is kind of like a god yeah <laughs> let's go with that <laughs> you make the worlds yeah i was more of a character based uh, sort of more interested in characters though and like not so much the 3d side of it because it's very frustrating if you're not very technical <laughs> Got it. So you just make people. I Yeah, I like drawing people and making people. That's me. Yeah. That's cool. Cool, cool. Um, any question? Hello. Hang on. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, that's all right. So, like, um, have, like have you worked on a lot of um, movie sort of things? Or is it like um, small projects? Um, a little bit of both. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely like a lot of small projects. When I first started, it was a lot of student films. Yeah. There are several colleges around here that have film programs. One of them is Bright State, and they actually have a dedicated film program. And then there's there are there's several others, but Bright State's the closest one to me. And so, as far as the film goes, I got a lot of a lot of instruction on set that way, and it was very low key because these are thesis projects. So they're just doing these for grades. Yeah. I think I've got one. One of them actually was completed. You know, what happens is a lot of times too is that they get going and they're all gung ho and like, we're gonna put these in film festivals yeah. and, and it's gonna, you know, we're it's, maybe we'll sell them and you're lucky if you get a completed copy. Uh, so, <laughs> cause they get going and then school starts up again and whoever was supposed to edit is overwhelmed or overloaded. And, so I have footage, I think, from all of them. Okay. I'm actually, Warren is, once I get him the footage, is is gonna help edit them together for me to do a reel, because I've been really bad about getting my reel together, because mm. I haven't really, I could have used it multiple times, but I haven't needed it, and that keeps sliding back down on the priority list, but that's one of the things I'm doing for the end of the summer, like I need to get that done. Yeah. Um, so, and then I've done a lot of local commercials. Um, I don't know, you probably wouldn't know any of the like little uh, grocery stores, like Kroger is kind of a big one here. Um, gas station stuff. Uh, we've got Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati. So I've done a lot of things for that. And a lot of it tends to be in-house. So what's really interesting is that you can do a commercial that's never actually aired anywhere. So what they'll do is they'll use it for training or they'll use it for a spec commercial where then they'll go to one of the coasts and do a big national commercial. So one of those people get like the big gig. Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, which is awful. And then I've been on a few um, bigger sets. Uh, we've had the Ides of March came through. So I was an extra on that. Um, I was an extra on the uh, Miles Ahead. It's about the Miles Davis story. Mm -hmm. Um, years ago, I was actually a stand-in for Madeline Stowe on uh, Bad Girls. You have to look that up. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Western about four women um, out in the Old West trying to make a life for themselves. It was, it was really interesting. I got to meet some neat people, and that was the first time I was on set. So I was on set for six days a week for two months, and that was, that was a neat experience. Um, but for the most part, I've done a lot of shorts, um, you know, little short films. Yeah. Just one that finished and actually showed recently is called Jacob's Paradox, which was like a sci-fi time travel -y thing. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, on an online festival right now. We actually had a screening and it, it turned out really well. My part isn't big, but my character is kind of pivotal to the story. It was a neat story. And then of course I was in Warren's short about the zombies. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I think his was actually the first first thing that I was able to do that wasn't a, you know, an angsty mom character. <laughs> which, <laughs> I was like, yes, I get to shoot things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like a nice change. Cause like, you don't want to get typecast into sort of same role. Right. Well, and and then like I said, the reason I really I I love sci-fi stuff. I love action adventure. Um, you know, I like the you know the sappy movies too. You know, or the, the comedies and the romance. Yeah, those are fun too. But if you throw up, you know, Terminator and you know some love story, I'm gonna watch Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of fun to do. And it was it was an interesting experience because I actually did not meet Warren until the day of the shoot. Oh. I auditioned, yeah, I auditioned for him over the phone. Wow. Yeah, at a soccer game. What? <laughs> <laughs> My son had a soccer tournament and I um, I actually forgot the, uh, the part of the script that I was supposed to have. So he read it for me and I wrote it down on a scrap piece of paper 
And then we did it over the phone. <laughs> wow, professional. <laughs> was, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, I went uh, And it was really cool because we did a lot of talking about what we both liked as far as films, and we're like, we like the same movies. Yeah. You know, like Farscape and Firefly and. Um, you know, the Battlestar Galactic, a lot of the TV shows and, yeah. you know, like the same kind of characters. So that was, that was, that was fun. Mm -hmm. And see what else I did. And then I've done a couple of longer, you know, full, what they call feature length, um, locally. And they're still kind of putting those together and mm -hmm. we'll see how they turn out. Yeah. Awesome. So... So like with all the projects that you've worked on, is the sort of like one that's been your favorite to work on so far? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, they all kind of have different things that are, are kind of fun. Yeah. Like I said, the, the zombie thing, Day of the Jagged Dead, which by the way, you can watch on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Be nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun, which is cool story about that though. I don't think we had a single rehearsal for anything. Most of that oh. was all one take. <laughs> wow. And I was like, are, are you sure that's okay? And he's like, yeah, we're good. Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> it was like very much a guerrilla film. But that one was a lot of fun because, like I said, it was something different. It wasn't the typical, you know, I'm a housewife who's sad and woe is me. Um, I really enjoyed working on uh, Jacob's Paradox. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a, uh, you know, another kind of sci-fi thing, but it was, oh, it was the first movie that I died in. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was deed. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was an interesting experience. That was a lot of fun. I think that was probably the first short that I had done. It was kind of more professional. Like it was actually really, it wasn't kind of cobbled together. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other uh, it was called Gossamer, and it's not out yet, but what I what was really cool about that is it introduced me to this whole production crew that I'm part of now called Focus Peak Media, and these guys have like become my, my second family. So that one was definitely a favorite because it introduced me to these guys, and we, we, the thing that I'm directing is with Focus Peak. So, yeah. so that was kind of a jumping off point. So I'd okay. say, and it's funny because they're all local little short things. You know, it's mm. not the big stuff. The big stuff yeah. is like, eh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. The bigger things get, the more you lose some of their, uh, I don't know, realness, I suppose. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I think for me, I really like, I like to make connections with people. And it's harder to do when you've got people coming in from out of town. They don't really care who you are. Mm. And they're just going to be leaving again. Yeah. And, you know, it's like this quick, fast and dirty thing and you, you kind of leave and you're like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That was, that was fun, I guess. And the local stuff, you, you get to make relationships and figure out who you really like to work with, who's dependable. Um, and then, like I said, you kind of create a second family yeah. through all of this. Well, it's that connection food. Um everyone doing the same thing that you love and it's fine. Exactly. Cause then you're like, oh, you're the same kind of brand of crazy as I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found my people. <laughs> um, I should really start structuring these questions a bit better, but nah. <laughs> it's sad, but... That's all right. It's all good. Um, how do you like approach getting the character for a specific role? Like, is there any sort of techniques you use, or this is me asking from someone who's never talked, spoken to an actor, so I don't know. So. Sure, which is interesting because there are probably as many different ways to get into a character as there are actors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because everybody has their own thing. Uh, I think because I had such a rich kind of fantasy life as a kid. And, you know, always played. I mean, my siblings and I, we'd go out and we'd reenact scenes from Star Wars or make up our own. Um, there was a lot of pretending, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think as a kid, it's not just pretending, it's I really am this. Yeah, yeah. And so, 
Right, right. And you kind of, yeah, this is what's happening to me. And so a lot of it, I think for me is just sitting with the, the character and kind of thinking about, well, what would they be feeling? What would they be thinking right now? Why, why would they, they want that thing that they want? And kind of overlay that with who I am and kind of actually, I don't know, pretend. I know that sounds like it's such a non-technical <laughs> kind of way to do it, um, but it's, I kind of just step into like pretending that I am that person. So, you know, in, in that moment, you know, I, I am them. So, so it's not really technical. It's not really like, okay, I do all of these stretches and helms and all of that. You know, I've done classes where we do that and it feels distracting to me. Mm. I think I, I have a tendency just to be a little bit more subtle. Um, there are some things like I'm going to be a uh, kind of a antagonist in, in a Western this okay. fall. And I'm going to see about getting in touch with somebody who does uh, dialect work just to kind of work on getting some distinct, uh, I don't know, verbal patterns because yeah. she's actually, she's an interesting character. So, so yeah, I mean, you yeah, don't really have a technique. I just, I just pretend. Yeah, well, that's what it is, well, it is really, isn't it? Really just pretending, so. Yeah. I just play. I mean, yeah. that's the thing is that acting can be difficult in as much as that there's a lot of, there are a lot of hours and, and if you do something, you may do it 15 times, mm -hmm. you know, this one little bit. And yeah. that can be difficult if you're doing something really emotional, because once you get through like something really highly emotional, mm. you've got this whole catharsis yeah. and it's hard to find the tension again. Mm. So that, that's difficult and it can be emotionally draining. But as far as, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been pushed to a place where I'm like, boy, that's really hard to get into that character. I'm sure there are characters that would be, but so far what I've done hasn't. So it's not been that difficult to go, oh, we're playing, this is fun. I love doing this because I love stepping into another aspect because that's the thing is that we all have how many aspects to us? You know, how many uh, different points where you can be really ugly and mean and cruel and selfish or inappropriate or heroic or cowardly or kind or deceptive or, or whatever it is. We all have those. So it's just a matter of tapping in to that part of who you are yeah. and kind of letting that out to play instead of suppressing that going, oh, we Shh, don't don't do that. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like what we're taught to do as we grow older, really. Sort of like we're not really encouraged that much to play the older we get. Which right. Is a bit of a shame. Which why I act like a kid most of the time. <laughs> Best way to be. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so like with characters, is there a sort of a type of character that you like you haven't played yet that you'd love to play? Like a specific type? I don't know. Huh. There are a couple. I mean, I've kind of, shorts don't really allow you to kind of really do a lot with anybody. Um, of course, some of my favorite characters are things like from, like Firefly. Mm -hmm. You know, that the river character was amazing. Um, you know, Battlestar Galactica. I like both the old and the new. I grew up watching the old one and loved that. And, but the new one had some different nuance. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I think getting the opportunity to play characters who are, and this is going to sound so cliche, but you know, sound, who are strong mm -hmm. and who aren't uh, kind of shrinking violets, but who are strong, but yet have depth, you know, that they yeah. aren't just, um, they aren't just one note characters. Cause I think when something that happens a lot in, in films that women tend to either be, you know, they're like the sex object or if they're going to be strong characters, they're like, they're men 
with female body parts, <laughs> you yeah. know? There's not, like, there doesn't tend to be a whole lot in between. That's why I think the sci-fi TV shows, because they have an opportunity to kind of explore all of that, are more interesting. Um, so characters like that, or of course, I think it's always, again, cliche, you know, people like, I want to play like a really bad guy. Mm. Because that's the opportunity, like I said, to explore those really dark, shadowy parts of you. Yeah. And not necessarily to help them grow, but maybe to face those parts. Because I think we have a tendency to shrink away from it. So yeah. it's acting is a lot like therapy. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> It really is. So, yeah. So just, I don't know. It's just some fun characters that just aren't straight, you know, mm. do something that... A lot more depth for them. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um... So you said, like, the first movie you ever watched was Star Wars. Yeah. That influenced you a lot. Um... If, like what other movies are like influence your some of your favorites maybe say that again like what other movies are like your favorite movies i'm sorry i've got a lawnmower going <laughs> that's fine <laughs> i was saying um so what other sorts of movies like are your favorites that have in inspired you oh goodness um are there others that aren't necessarily sci-fi that that aren't necessarily sci-fi. Um, there's actually, boy, there's this movie that I think is Indian. It was a foreign movie, and then I, a friend of mine had it. It's called Water, and it was probably one of the most poignant movies I'd ever watched. It was about women, the women who are widows in India. You know, they're they're not allowed to, or at least they weren't allowed to. I, I can't you know, be an expert on that, but not allowed to remarry. So they actually lived in their own little community and they were kind of considered cast offs. And it was followed this woman who was still a young woman and kind of her path. And it was just one of those movies that just kind of like, oh, I think it, it carried it for a while. Yeah. That was really, that was a really good one. Um, hmm. So you should have asked me these before so I could have thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I always pick um, up. Because I think the big ones typically have been the sci-fi. And I think it's just because they, they look at people a little differently. Mm -hmm. uh, what other movies? Unforgiven was a good one. Okay. You know, again, that's just... I know, it was just really, really beautiful and sad and... Hmm. You put me on the spot, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think People that would be possible. Think, oh, oh, she's just a sci-fi nerd and doesn't like other movies. I do like other movies. I'm just trying to think of what. I'd have to go like look at my DVD collection and go, no oh, cheating. yeah, it's right. Huh? <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> Cheat. <sighs> oh. You know, here's the thing. This is going to sound so bad, but I am like such a movie whore. Like I will watch <laughs> just about anything and can find something redeeming about almost any movie. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I, I enjoy it. And I thought I would have a hard time after doing movies, like start picking them apart, but I'm really good at suspending belief. Yeah. So unless it's something really bad, um, or really good. I mean, every now and then you're like, oh, that was a good shot. That was yeah. some really good cinematography there. Like sometimes it's just like, oh, but for the most part, like I'm just really good about being able to kind of, this is, this is where we are now. So I'm going to watch it. Um, mm -hmm. Joss Whedon stuff. I really like his stuff. The Cabin in the Woods. I didn't think I would like it because I'm not a big horror fan. I went through a period where I watched a lot of it as a child and I think it scarred me a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, I don't think I want any more horror. But that was really different and it was really such an interesting look at society on so many levels that 
and and movies you know it's kind of like movies and society you're like oh that was that was pretty that was pretty cool yeah what about you what kind of movies influenced you um sorry hang on the quality's just gone dead like jarry so it's like a slight delay you don't want that no i think it's all right it's kind of getting a bit better sorry i just i, I, I just sorry I was gonna say, tell your neighbors to get off the internet. I know, I'm holding mine. <laughs> um, moves for me. I think Star Wars is up there. I think it's mine. To be honest, I don't know. It just because I remember like I wasn't old enough to see it the cinema, the original trilogy, but I remember watching the box set. I think my dad borrowed it off someone from work, and I was just watching it for the first time, just sat in front of the TV, just like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, gosh. I'm trying to think of other films because, like, I I kind of watch whatever as well, but I don't really kind of. When people ask me, I don't tend to remember like much about them sort of things other than like I really liked it. It sounds really vague, I know, but uh, it's alright. Uh, you know, it's funny because yeah, Star Wars has been a theme. <laughs> I even wrote a college paper using references to Star Wars, and my professor was like, "Ooh, that was really good." Yeah. Oh. Thank you, George Lucas. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I, I really like the movies that maybe kind of show you a little bit about yourself or what can be, you know, what mm -hmm. you can aspire to. I think that's one of the things that Star Wars was really great about is that here you have this young man who just kind of. I don't know, thinks life sucks and he's stuck and he wants something more and you know the opportunity presents itself and you know that there's a whole world but you have to be ready for it. You have to be ready to step into it and things yeah. can always change. And and you can grow from it as well. You know, to kind of watch Luke Skywalker's whole character arc from this kind of whiny bratty little boy to somebody who's found who he is and found his center and his, you know, his source of strength and to go, oh, okay, so that's, I, I could do that. Um, you know, I like movies that maybe reflect where I am in life mm -hmm. so that maybe they're going through something and, and you go, oh, and you have an epiphany and you go, oh, I'm like totally doing that. I need to pay attention yeah. to what I'm doing. When it dawns on you, it's kind of like you. <laughs> like, oh. oh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> right, right. Or just to have moments where you can, you know, definitely escapism is great, but to have moments that if you're open to it, movies are stories and stories can teach you, you know, about yourself, about where you are in your journey in life, mm -hmm. about how to relate to other people. Um, how to be courageous, how to be honest, how to step into your higher you. And, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not like all movies are noble or anything, but movies are a modern day form of storytelling. Yeah. And that's what stories are, were for. You know, it's to remind you of who you are as a human being and what you're capable of and both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I just remember this, um some else, some others as well. There aren't necessarily things that grew up, movies that grew up with, but ones that kind of influenced me, like my late years, were the Studio Ghibli films. Um, like, I think Princess Mononoke was the first one I saw, and it's like, obviously I love the art style, because it's like, most of their movies are still traditionally done in their animated style, but just like, the, it's like really simplistic, but just like, you, you tend to focus on nature and stuff and the importance of it. And it just it kind of like struck a chord in me. I love them films now. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Because I'm not like, people ask me like, what anime into am I, am I into? And I'm like, I don't really watch anime. But I love, I love them movies because they're just so beautifully made. Yeah, they really are. I haven't really seen a lot of an anime either. I mean, of course, I grew up watching cartoons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when my boys were little, Sailor Moon was playing a lot, so we watched Sailor Moon together. And I was like, "Oh, that's anime!" I just thought it was a cartoon. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, just <laughs> you know? old cartoon. 
I said, well, all right, this is specific. Um, my younger son has been watching a bunch, and so there's a couple that I'm like, that looks like that might be interesting. If I get some time, you know, yeah. I'll look at it. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I don't know a lot about the anime, but <laughs> it look, they are beautifully done. They're, mm -hmm. yeah. they're amazing. And, and it seems like a lot of times their storylines are really pretty good too. And yeah, you go, that's, it's much better than like Thundercats. <laughs> I know, like, uh, like you, when you think back to some of the cartoons, like the Western cartoons you grew up watching, and a lot of them were just like big adverts with toys that were trying to sell you and stuff. And it's like, I just realise that now. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, all the, like the Transformers and yeah, and, and <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> we're really bad, really bad, and Smurfs. Although I think. Those are goofy. I wasn't that like a German. Did it start in Germany or something yeah, like that? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and have... it's. It... Go ahead. So I was going to ask, did you have a cartoon called Moomins over there? What was it? Moomins. It was kind of a bit like Smurfs, where there was these little creatures, but they look like weird hippo things, and I think you're like from the Netherlands or something. It was really surreal. I don't think so. It doesn't mean that it isn't showing somewhere, but I don't yeah. think I've not seen I remember seeing that on the kid and he was like, I couldn't watch it, it was too... <laughs> even as a kid I just thought it was like, I don't know, it's bizarre. Yeah. There were definitely some bizarre cartoons and it's, when you're a kid I don't think you realize why no. they're so bizarre. No. And then it's an adult and you find out what some of these adults who are creating the cartoons were into and you're like, hmm. oh. Wow. Those were chemically induced cartoons. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, 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 do you have a sort of a favorite actor, actress, or or more than one? A couple. Yeah, I I kind of joke around because um, I really like, I like Ewan McGregor. Mm -hmm. Um, everything that he's been in, I really like. Um, Natalie Portman is freaking fantastic like yeah. she's just one of those even as a child the first thing i think i saw her in was beautiful girls have you seen that no the name sounds familiar you should, so I'm you like, should see that one i think matt Dillon is in it uh uma thurman c thomas howell there's was it c no that's not who it was maybe he was in it too anyway very ensemble cast, but she couldn't have been more than like 10 or 12. Okay. Blew me away. I mean, and she's just gotten better. She's amazing. Um, and of course, Jennifer Lawrence is super like big right now, but she does a really nice job too. Mm -hmm. um, other actors. I don't know. If Hugh McGregor's in it, I'm going to watch it. It's just... <laughs> Is that from an acting perspective or because he's easy on the eye? <laughs> uh, both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> both. Um, yeah, he was actually in Miles Ahead and he was left like the week before I was on set. And I'm like, ah, oh, so close. So I'm just calling the universe. Like one of these days I'm going to be on a movie with Ewan McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. he's, he's actually, he, just, he seems really cool too. I've seen the... Um, the the first documentary he did on was it long way around yes on the bike, yeah. His, yeah and it he i don't know it's just he seems like a really cool person and really mm. down to earth and yeah definitely um I'm trying to think what other actors do i like if i see something that's like oh i'd like to, i'd like to watch that used to be harrison ford mm. Not, I mean, just because, you know, he had fun movies. Um, hmm. Again, putting him in the spot. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of them that are, are good. It's, it's tough, too, because it seems like a lot of movies are, especially here, I don't know if you guys get a lot of the kind of, has to be a blockbuster and 
they kind of miss a lot of the, the nuance of things because they just want to do more Transformers and, and more superhero movies, which I'm a big fan of superhero movies. Yeah. I like Transformers, but I like other things too. And you miss out, you know, on a lot of really good performances. And I mean, Hugh Jackman is a, is a great actor. Um, you know, Russell Crowe, <laughs> I think a lot, a lot. I like a lot of the the actors from your side of the pond. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you miss just a lot of the good stuff because it's all about being a superhero or fighting a transformer or an alien. And like I said, I love that. Yeah. But we need more. It's like they find a certain formula that makes them a lot of money, so they're too scared of doing something that's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of getting really sick of reboots at the moment. Oh, like definitely. Classic films. So. Well, and then there are some things too that fruit flies. Um, <laughs> this is—it's been like buzzing around in front of me. That there are some movies like talking to go back to Star Wars. I love Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And I was excited for the new ones to come out. And in and of themselves are okay. Yeah. But compared to the first trilogy, you're like, they're they're missing something. You know, they're missing some of that gritty yeah. something. And, um, you know, they're just too slick. And, you know, I'm interested in seeing what J.J. Abrams is going to do with it. But sometimes a story is just a story. Yeah. And, and you don't need a prequel and a sequel and, and an offshoot and, and a this and that's yeah. you know one of the things that I really like about a lot of like British television is that it's like one season and it's encapsulate, encapsulated and that's the story yeah there isn't a oh we did really well we had great ratings what else can we write so that mm. we can keep going yeah, um, exactly. you know so it's it's gets kind of frustrating one of my favorite TV shows is coupling okay. and you know it was funny but it was like it was kind of like it followed this group of people and then it was done you know I enjoy Doctor Who I love Doctor Who but there's a point where you're like is it gonna go on forever yeah I know what you mean it's like when like a story ends you think right don't touch that now because that was like perfect ending like you don't need mm-hmm. anything more it's like um, when I read a uh, the Harry Potter books, which I'm a big fan of, because mm-hmm. I like grew up reading them and stuff, and obviously until I was like in my teenage years. But so it's like, like I keep hearing things now like they do more films and stuff and more spin-offs, and it's like we don't need to. Like for one, you've made enough money <laughs> off, off, off it. Right. Then two, like it's just it just it just wrapped up the whole story. You didn't like it doesn't need anything extra sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think a little mystery about what the characters would go on and do mm. is good, you know, because yeah. it enables you to kind of go, okay, what if? And it enables you to fill some things in. But then when you start doing all of this, well, you know, then Harry did this and he and um, the little redheaded girl, <laughs> like, you know, and then they had problems in their marriage. And then, yeah. the, you know, you start to you beat it to death and you take away some of the magic when you look at it too closely. And I think that's yeah. something that people forget in their quest for for the money. And of course, audiences in general, they're like, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to be done. I want more. Because mm-hmm. anybody who really loves stories, and you say you really like books. Yeah. I don't know about you, you really get into something and you get immersed. Like I have to be really careful when I choose to read certain things because I need to make sure that I don't need to like cook for anybody or do anything because I'm out for the next 10 hours. Yeah. And, you, and you get completely immersed. And it's like, you literally like almost feel like you have to crawl out of the book when it's over. And it feels like somebody's died cause you're done. And you, you know, especially the ones that are good that really mm-hmm. grab you. And you're like, I, 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 I'm not ready to be done yet. You know, you kind of have to reacclimate to the real world and you know, in that moment, you're like, I want more. But if you get, then when you get more, then it's like, oh, but that wasn't as good as the first time around. No. 
No, yeah, so, definitely. I think as well with like with Star Wars and stuff. Um, I know because he, he originally planned to do a prequel and stuff, but I think because when we put the, the first made the movie, it had that sort of urgency to it, sort of like we don't have this big budget, we have this amazing idea that we don't know if it's going to work or not, and then it did work. But then, like when you go back so many years later, when it made all this money, the the safer. So the energy isn't there as much. Like the idea is there, but it's like, it, but like because they've got all the budget to um, spend on CGI and stuff. It, it lacked the sort of, I don't know, I don't know, the, the authenticity that the original had. Mm-hmm. Like with all the models and stuff, they look better than the CGI stuff. It, it, it's, it's a weird thing, like, to think about, but, yeah, that's my thought on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, definitely. It's interesting. I was just reading or watched a thing the other day um, about the CGI, that it's too clean. Hmm. It, it's, it's too neat. It's too shiny. That it, there there isn't a sense of believability, and so it's harder to kind of sink down into it and really, really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I get derailed really easily. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so what are we talking about? Um, okay, so I think you already answered this. But I, I wrote it down before you answered it. Is there, is there like other aspects to movies apart from on screen acting that you have dabbled in or have interest in? Oh, yeah. Well, I kind of sort of did. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit at the beginning. Yeah, I've been producing, which anytime you talk about producing, which is interesting because there are a lot of different layers. If you see mm-hmm. on the movies as an executive producer, yeah. oftentimes that's somebody who's lots of money. Mm. Um, or they're the main person who's done everything. Um, so producing is just kind of getting things together, yeah. finding the resources, helping get the, the talent, um, finding locations, organizing stuff. I kind of say being a producer is a lot like being a mom. <laughs> yeah. It's you, you get everything together and make it go. Um, and cause I'm a little bit, I think I realize I'm a little bit bossy, so it's hard for me just to act because I'm like, yeah, but if you just if you just do that, that that, that, that would work better. Just, okay. Have so, I gotten you into trouble before? <laughs> um, it's come close. I actually have a funny story because I uh, on the Ides of March, I'm an extra, right? Okay. And I'm on the bus, and there is this little story where uh, George Clooney was directing Ryan Gosling. And it's like this whole political thing and Ryan Gosling had changed the line a little bit and they they wanted um, a different word because I think Ryan Gosling was using the word sexy, you know, like the sexy people of Ohio and George mm-hmm. Clooney was like, let's see if we can, you know, good, but something different, you know, not good, you know, like the good people, but something something along those lines. And they're sitting there hemming and hawing and they're like, can't find anything. And I'm just like, the intelligent people, <laughs> they're like, oh, we like that. And as soon as I said it, though, I was like, I'm so good at getting in trouble for talking. Yeah. <laughs> like, can't keep my mouth shut. Uh, I didn't get in trouble, though, because I guess it was a good suggestion. But I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't even know if that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look. Um, but no, I, I like to be, I like to kind of help. I, I have a hard time just doing one thing. If there's something I see that I that I can help, I want to do that. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to be directing a short. It's a very short short. It's going to be under five minutes and a single actor. And it's going to be kind of an intense thing. And we're doing that in two weeks. And it's with my my Focus Peak Media Group. And um, it should be good. I'm excited to kind of see. It'll probably be January before it's actually out anywhere and when it does. I will be pimping it on all of my social media. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I just, I, I like, if there's something I can do to help, you know, I'd like to be able to do that because it, it's just hard for me to sit on my hands. I mean, mm. it doesn't make sense if everybody else is going, I don't know, what do we do? And I'm like, I've got an idea. Yeah. You've got the answer or you think you do, you might as well say something. Right, or I, or maybe this is a step closer. Yeah. So, so yeah, I just I, I kind of like the whole collaborative process, and because mm-hmm. sometimes you have an idea, and then somebody goes, oh, oh, 
and then we can do this on top of that. And then it's like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah, because that was kind of an idea when I set up the group thing that I'm working on at the moment. You guys and everyone else. Just to get everyone together. I don't, I don't know. I think I was just going to do like just a video at first. Just one video of like everyone's working it. And then it kind of snowballed. And then I've got like 30 people and now I've nearly got close to 40 people. Now I'm doing three videos. And all this other stuff. <laughs> In interviews. Uh -oh. Yeah, and it's like, well... But yeah. yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but it's a lot of administration work that I'm not really used to. <laughs> well, and that may be something to look at to see, you know, other people who are involved in it, if there's other people who can kind of step in and yeah, and share the load. Because that's the thing about collaborations, and that's what's really awesome about them, is that it's not just one person doing it. Mm -hmm. It's everybody gets to help share the load, yeah. and you do that the whole group can carry a whole lot more than the one person who's carrying for everybody. And and then everybody's involved. You know, mm -hmm. everybody feels like they're a part of something. And I, and I think ultimately that's one of the things that human beings want. You know, we want to be a part of something. We want to be yeah. a part of a tribe or a community or family. And, and we want to feel safe in there and feel like we contribute and we're important. And that's one of the things that, you know, if, if you have a good film set, that you have that. Um, I'm reading a book right now. Uh, the guy's name is Simon Simon Sinek, I think. It's called Leaders Eat Last. Really good book. I think really anybody who's in any kind of organization should read it, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether they're a leader or not, um, because it talks about the, the culture and environment of any kind of group. And he specifically relates it to business and he uses a lot of military examples as well. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, is that anytime we're in a, a group, you want to feel safe. You want to feel like you're important and you want to feel like somebody else has your back. Yeah. So definitely if you're you're getting to the point where you're getting overloaded, throw it out there. Cause I bet you yeah. there'll be some people who could be like, well I could help out, you know, for a short period of time or I could do this because mm -hmm. I love to do that. Yeah, there is people who've stepped forward already. I just need to organize who can do what and stuff and you know, get the work to it. I'll get there. Still a, yeah. early, early days, I suppose. Um, yeah. You must have had a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just like a guy who likes drawing and now I've like, got this group of three people. <laughs> I've got to like <laughs> negotiate and stuff. Well, that's what happens when you collect people. No, I'll collect them. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so there's a fun question. If you could be in any movie, what would it be? Like any movie ever. Like what any movie. Would... I might ever? be an obvious one, but you know, surprise me, maybe. <laughs> Actually, um, hmm, any movie ever. You know, actually, I think Serenity. Okay. I mean, I love Star Wars, but it's like, I don't know, kind of removed. That's, it's like the I don't know, golden calf or something. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I think Serenity kind of had everything. You know, the whole Firefly uh, show, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's a really good example of what we're talking about, like, I know they got cancelled and you know Joss Whedon had other stories but oh, yeah. like having it just kind of that one season and then the movie like leave it alone don't make any more yeah. um, but it was just such a great example of overcoming adversity finding that family what you know having an amazing kind of servant leader um, going against you know the man you know as it is or um, finding your own way in the universe, uh, plus the whole sci-fi and mystery and like it kind of had everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um. So like um. 
the way you're working now, do you have like an end goal sort of thing where you want to be in like say 10 years, maybe? Ooh. Well, first, I still want to be alive. <laughs> yeah, that's <so> bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be above ground. Um, yeah, you know, kind of going back to Focus Peak Media, mm -hmm. um, I want to see us being a viable and solvent uh, production company. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're making baby steps towards that, you know, working towards that. We're, you know, doing our own own content but in the meantime you know kind of looking at finding out you know where to, you know where to go to, to be able to make the money you know yeah. I mean so you know if anybody who's out there if you need a commercial made or a short film or a full-length film give me a call <laughs> oh, I, oh, you see I, again. yeah I've, I've got people who are really good <laughs> um yes um I, you know, I still want to keep be working in here, you know, in the industry. I'd like to have some films that I could say that I'm proud of that mm -hmm. people can buy, but I really have no interest in being like famous. You know, it's one thing yeah. to be, be known in your community and your circles, but I, I, I don't have any interest in being a celebrity. Yeah. I just, you know, here's the thing. I, I'm lucky if I comb my hair when I go to the grocery store, like I, 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 I pretty it up for you, Daniel. <laughs> so, so, um, you know, it's like, I maybe wear my glasses and throw my hair and, you know, a ponytail and wear ready clothes. Cause I have more important things to do. If I'm not on a set or if I don't have a reason, it takes a while, you know, to yeah. fix your hair and do the makeup and find clothes that look good. And, and I work in the garden a lot. There are a lot of times, you know, I leave, you leave my vegetable garden or, you know, I've got dirt on my hands because I can't get them scrubbed clean or, or whatever. And I just, I don't have time to get pretty every day. So for goodness sakes, I would be like the person, you know, on the tabloids going, oh my God, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Walking out of your house with half a shrub in your head and stuff. Right. <laughs> right. So I just, you know, I... It's, I don't care, no. you know, it's, and, and it, maybe that comes from growing up and being, you know, the weird looking nerdy girl growing up who I didn't find hair products and makeup until well into adulthood. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's how they make their hair do that instead of this. Got it. <laughs> um, so... But yeah, I want to just, you know, I want to keep working, you know, I want to keep making some cool films. I'd love to be able to do some things where they can help other people, um, you know, maybe shine a light on something, maybe be able to make enough money so that, you know, I can start some kind of philanthropic something mm -hmm. or another, because there are a lot of people who need, who need help. And I'd love to actually, I'd love to make some films that are just, I don't know, inspirational, that people can look at and go, oh, I don't have to be content where I am. I can, I can change things. I can, I can reach for more. Just because things look horrible around me doesn't mean they have to be that way. Cause that's, you know, not to go into like a lot of detail, but I didn't grow up in the best of situations. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's one of the reasons Star Wars spoke to me so much is yeah. because you don't have to be stuck. You know, there are resources and there, there are ways to get past and we don't, for most of the world, we don't live in a caste system anymore. We don't live in a place where you can't step beyond who you are or where you started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I could just, I don't know, I just, I want to be able to make movies that can maybe be a beacon for other people yeah. or be a really dumb escape either way <laughs> <laughs> so it makes kind of balance one or the other you know it's... <laughs> oh. oh you've inspired me with that little speech oh and <laughs> <laughs> um, do the other that that's most of the questions actually that i have okay. but i might have another one spring on you catch you off guard oh good that's my favorite <laughs> um, so like in between work 
are there things you do like that are away from movies that sort of thing like yeah or anything? yeah uh well i've already mentioned the gardening i've got a huge mongous vegetable garden that is a hot mess right now we've had a lot of rain and uh, <laughs> um so i've got some stuff in there and i like flowers and hang out with my family. We um, we all actually have been playing for about a year and a half a game called Ingress. Mm -hmm. So that actually takes up a lot of our free time um, because we're in a community and it's global. So Ashley, Daniel, you could play. What do I have to do? Because I've never heard of it. Do you have Do you have a smartphone? Yes. Okay. It we And actually one of the things, it's a Google-based game. And what's kind of cool is that they introduced it to all Android phones first, so the iPhone people had to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had to wait for once. Um, but yeah, so it's, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah. It's called Ingrid. It's, it's booting up right now. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, so it's this global game. It's kind of a cross between capture the flag and um, like geocaching. Okay. And there are portals um, because they're called portals. I think the tagline is, what is it? The world is not, no, oh, I can't remember. I don't follow the backstory very well. I mean, you would think I would, but yeah. it's kind of convoluted and they keep changing it. Um, here, I'll tap on a local portal. Um, but there are places like churches, landmarks, memorials, um, cemeteries, uh, works of art, in you know just kind of interesting places uh and the idea is that there are two factions there's the resistance and there's the enlightened and the enlightened is green which makes sense because green is good the resistance is blue blue is bad <laughs> <laughs> okay so like here's here's a local portal so this is one that we actually i think my son owns that one okay. and what you can do is there's a little there's a little hack button at the top I don't know if you can see it because it's not yeah. lit up and that's how you can get gear you can deploy resonators you can actually um, fire you get weapons too so there's like this whole range of like weapons that you have that that are um, levels and strength mm -hmm. So you start off as a level one and you try to capture portals and then you try to link them together. And if you link three of them together in a triangle, you make a control field. And there are events that go on uh, periodically. Like tomorrow, there's a first Saturday event in our local area. So we'll all get together and it's kind of like this really nerdy battle with our phones. Like where you're like, oh, <laughs> you're like trying to deploy or trying to, to attack. But what's really cool is that we've actually gone to several what's called anomalies. We've gone to one in Atlanta, went to one in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago, uh, which coincided with us going to see our son. Um, but they're all like literally they're all over the world. They're uh, London is going to have a ton of portals. Bigger cities have more. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they've had them in Japan. I think even. I think Russia might um, know they've got got it in China um, we've been in contact with a guy in Australia who will uh, will uh, oh my gosh my words I can't word right now um, <laughs> operate for us you know so who can look at the overall map and go okay this is where you need to go to do this and do that um, but there's a big community and we've actually made real life friends with with our local community on both the enlightened side as well as the resistance side. Okay. Um, we we had, you know, a resistance guy come to our younger son's graduation party. Um, you know, we've had, we've celebrated birthdays, helped people move, taking people to the airport. You know, it's it's become like a, another real life group of people that you can hang out with who, which is really interesting because they're from all walks of life. So my son is now, my younger son is now 18. So he's been playing for almost two years. and he's got friends who are in their 50s through this game yeah and they respect him because he's he's really good at being able to figure out how to layer the fields <laughs> to get as much as you can because you know those games where you've got like all the dots and it's mm -hmm. like see how many squares you can make or how many triangles yeah. you can make 
by lining them up. He's really good at that. Uh, so it's kind of neat because we know people who are teachers, carpenters, die cutters, uh, medical field, you know, my husband who's in the military, you know, me, students, kind of all throughout the whole spectrum, which is kind of kind of cool. So we, we do a lot of that. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Yeah, and what's kind of cool is you can do it as much or as little as you want, you know, mm -hmm. so you can go to a certain part of town and go, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just hack these portals, you know, as, as I go by, um, you know, or, you know, there are some days you're like, okay, we're going to make an ingress day and we'll go and, and make the whole area green or, or whatever. And we have local meetups where once a week we get together with our buddies and, um, but yeah, it's kind of, and with the other, the side effect, this is really great for the directionally challenged people because once you start playing, you start finding things that you do. It's like, well, it's this portal, you know, it's like, oh, it's the Dairy Queen portal or it's the whatever library portal. And you're like, oh, you start learning where things are yeah. <laughs> based on where the portals are. But I've learned a lot of places too, about a lot of places that I didn't know about because, you know, I'm looking for portals, places that I've gone um, in Columbus, Ohio, there's a rose garden that I can't even tell you how many thousands of rose bushes they have. And I, you know, being the gardener that I am and I love roses, I was looking for, you know, this cluster of portals and I'm like, oh, that's a whole bunch of them. I'll, I've got some time to kill. I'll go over there. And I walked in and like literally I'm walking around with my mouth open because there are so, so many roses. It's like being dropped into like, I don't know, a rose world, a rose garden. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. But it, I mean, it smelled good and it was beautiful and it was just like, like a little slice of heaven and that I would probably wouldn't have found it otherwise. And so it's kind of cool. So, yeah. So I do that. A lot of yard work, a lot of stuff around the house. You know, we've got the dog. Um, was a soccer mom for a long time, uh, in between coaching and roughing and going to my son's games. But now that they're both out of high school, um, you know, that's, that's not a prominent part of our lives anymore. So, I don't know. I'm always finding something to get into, though. Yeah, that's good. Let's keep them busy. Yeah. Try to stay out of trouble. Yeah. I try. <laughs> Fine with producers. <laughs> what about you? What do you do when you're not drawing and conducting interviews? No. Um, I like going walking. I like going for long walks. Because I live in the countryside. There's a lot of places to walk around. Um, spending time with my nephew a lot, because he's in the house, so it's like, yeah, I've seen him grow up. He's five now, so he's awesome. He's five? Oh. Yeah. He's like getting all these awards and stuff at primary school when <laughs> he's like five, but he's such a little dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's brilliant. No, I saw he always look after him, get to play with him. Use him as an excuse to act like a big kid, basically. So it's good. Yeah, and just hang out with friends and stuff. And I don't know. I like playing games, but I haven't played any while because I've just been so busy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hard thing about games. I think then that's one of the things that I like about Ingress is because I think I'm a gamer at heart, mm -hmm. but I don't have the patience to okay. sit um, in, in front of something. You know, I mean, I played on Atari <laughs> back, <laughs> back in the day. Um, and you know, and those were nice and simple. But today, like, I, I've played a little bit of um, Battlefront or something. I played mm -hmm. Knights of the Republic. Okay. But they're hard. Yeah. <laughs> you need like fifteen fingers, and it's like I want to push that and twist, and and, and I kind of feel like I don't know, like I'm limb challenged because <laughs> like, like, I'm enough. Um and there's there's a learning curve for that and yeah. I'm if I'm at home I have a whole bunch to do you know either you know I've got phone calls to make or meals to plan or bills to pay or food to make or the garden to eat or the dog to walk or something so you know that's what I like about Ingress is I can do it when I'm out and it's, it's a little bit of a rabbit hole but 
it's you know if I'm at home, it's just hard to focus. Yeah. And it's convenient. Spot you it, so, yeah. 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 But I mean, I see some of the games. I'm like, those look really cool and they look fun. And, but I'm just, I don't have the patience, and I think I've got just enough ADD to kind of go, oh wait, I, I, I'll be right back. You know. Yeah. One of those people, I will start on one thing and do about 15 other things as I go. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that's why it takes me three hours to get ready. <laughs> yeah, I think my mom thought as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I've got quite a lot of patience and stuff, but I, I like tend to focus on like specific game series that I like, I rarely go out on a limb because I'm not honest, people could just buy loads of games and just play through. I have to play one game that I really want and then I'll play like every aspect of it until it's 100% done. Because I'm like a completionist, I have to complete something, <laughs> it has to be fully done, sort of thing. But I don't happen a lot these days because I've been really busy with work and stuff, so. But that's good. It is You've good. Got coming up. I know, and we still need to chat about the work yes. that that you're gonna gonna do for me. Serious project. <laughs> very, very serious. Yeah. Well, no, but actually, I think it's it's funny, kind of how you know all your different aspects of life, kind of if it works right, that they all come together and and, mm. and meet. So. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm seeing a thing that can go on my business cards. Yeah, I got some business cards on the go. Yep. yep. I'm excited about that. So, well, have we talked about everything? I think we have, you know. We've covered most things. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so to like wrap up, where can people like find you and your work? Ah. Well, uh, I do have a Facebook page, Amanda R. Miller. Um, I am on Twitter and Instagram. Um, also, find what work I'm going to be doing. You can go to the Focus Peak Media page as well. Um, I post a lot for them, or hopefully, I'll hopefully be doing more. Um, what else? I do have a YouTube page, but I haven't really been using it. Uh, oh, and I have a website, which is also amandarmiller.com. Okay. And I can shoot those over to you, so if you want to like have them written. Yeah, I think I've got um, a few of them from the information you sent me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, just, I'll go over with it and make sure I've got all the right stuff. Yeah. But, you know, most of my Instagram stuff, though, isn't really work-related. It tends to be, well, yeah. I've got some work stuff, but, you know, it's a lot of food, dog, and garden, and bees. Oh, that was the other thing. I keep bees. Yeah. <laughs> I have bees. I've got two hives, and we got some honey this spring. Mm -hmm. I love my little bees. Oh, awesome. So, for, you know, if anybody's interested about bees, I've learned a lot. Honeybees are good. Wasps are a-holes. Big difference. Yeah, we know about wasps in this country. <laughs> yeah. Public um, number one. Yeah, definitely. They're they're evil, evil little things. Um, but yeah, so my Instagram is a lot of, you know, I use that more than Twitter. Mm -hmm. Just because, I don't know, I think it's more fun. Twitter is kind of like, you just don't know. Is it going into a black hole? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's I've it's really clicked huge. Twitter, yeah. It's, it's, it's strange. And I'm on G plus. Okay, cool. Yeah, do a like, and if so, if you're interested in Ingress, that's also a really good place to connect because we use G plus a lot as well. So I will post Ingressy things on there as well as acting things. So. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. Fine. Round. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for the terrible interview technique. <laughs> no, not at all. Sorry about the kind of. Mm. So I think we've both been like distracted by it today. I know. Going on. It's crazy. So are we still recording? Yeah, I'll just say. <laughs> just say, say bye. Bye. Fact, Thanks yeah. for watching. If you made it to the end, good job. Yeah, well done. Award yourselves 10 million invisible points. <laughs> okay, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>